Kerkhoman Rockside Farm, which is also the home to Kerkhoman Distillery. We're going to meet Mark French, who will present us what he does with his beef. But before that, I'd like to show you something special. This is Rockside Farm Shop. It's a very special place. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go in. Isn't it a wonderful place? This shop is the most unusual shop you can find on Isla. Here in the middle of nowhere, you have this delicacy um, place where, where, for me, it's a very dangerous place because I want to buy everything. Look, for instance, this wonderful olive oil with lemons marinated in it, just a few drops on a fish and with whiskey or in a dressing with a little whiskey, it's fantastic. And everywhere we have these, these quins um, with cheese. That's a very good compliment. Quince and whiskey, it's another great uh, match. And uh, also I've seen that, that uh, it's, a, it's a milk toffee spread, not Weight Watcher, but you indulge yourself with that. It's fantastic. And also these little whiskey cakes, some of them are made with an island single malt, and I've been told that it was Beaumont. Then we get we come to this, the fresh ingredients, the cheese, and also this Isla, the Isla smoked beef Mark told us about, the single malt uh, Scotch whiskey with Brooklady, but he also does the smoked wild venison, the smoked beef without whiskey, for those who wouldn't like whiskey, it's impossible, uh, and the Scottish pastrami. That's absolutely fantastic. But now I'm really looking forward to do my shopping. By near Rockside Farm and on a very invigorating morning and we've been welcomed by the cattle behind. Uh, they're, they're quite happy to see us. Uh, Mark, this, this cattle, uh, is, is it Angus beef? Yeah, they're, they're, the majority of them are Aberdeen Angus cross, cross, cross cattle. Uh, we use an Angus bull and uh, we breed all our own replacements so they're sort of almost three-quarter bred Angus cows, yeah. And how many cattle do you have? Or, uh, up here, cattle? well, up here there's about, uh, well, total is about 300 head of cattle up here. And we've seen little calves, young calves with the uh, Yeah, the some calves. of them have got younger calves, mainly springborn calves. So you said, you said, told me that they, they would stay about 30 months on the farm uh, altogether? The, the, the cattle that we finish are, are no older than 30 months, yeah. How did this idea of doing uh, Isla smoked beef come to you? Uh, well, <laughs> sorry, it was uh, it was really a way of adding value to, to something that we already produced, um, and sort of on the back of the whiskey name that Isla has, we, we decided to marinate the, the beef in, in single malt whiskey and Burkhaddy whiskey first before we smoked it. Um, which made it a bit more interesting, gave us a good sort of uh, selling tool really. Um, and it's sort of grown from there. And you, um, did you do experiments to know how much whiskey you... We spent a long time sitting around the kitchen table <laughs> with, a, with a bottle of whiskey and <laughs> yeah. a bit of beef, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, uh, so the, 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 the beef is not smoked locally because you don't have... Uh, no, we, we don't, unfortunately, we don't have the facilities to, to smoke it ourselves. So we do use an extremely good uh, sort of contract smoker in the Highlands to do it for us. Um, really because we, we, we're, we're really farmers and, you know, we prefer to do what we do best and, and let somebody else do the, the, that bit for us. 
that's number 52. She's she's 52. she's the best cow on the farm. <laughs> Does she have a name? No, no she's, she's got 52. a number. She's 52. <laughs> Oh, this is beautiful. And she has a calf? That's that's her calf. That's only Maybe. about uh, two weeks old, that calf, oh, actually. Two weeks old, okay. Yeah. Mm. She do? What part of a beef are you using for the, your uh, smoked beef? It's it's a muscle in the back leg, in the hind quarter, that we, we use for smoking. It's just, it's, we've tried, tried a number of cuts, uh, and that seems to be the best one that we, we found. Is it cut before it's marinated or...? It's not sliced, no. no. It's, it's, it's marinated as a whole whole joint, as it were. Um, and it, it actually is, it's marinated in a, a lovely machine called a vacuum massager. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which really allows all the, all the marinade to go into the beef. So it's sort of... And then it's smoked and then it's sliced? Then it's smoked, then it's sliced, yeah. When talking to the massager, have you ever thought of, of doing like the Kobe beef, like <laughs> massaging your beef, well, your, your cattle? Uh, well, now that our cows, the ones that live inside next door to the distillery, um, yeah, I suppose they're very happy, contented cows. Yeah. Yeah, so you could, you, could, you could have them massage with uh, new make, with Kirkham and new make, and uh, see how <laughs> it goes. find a volunteer to massage them. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons for, for building the distillery in the first place, or my idea of you know, creating this farm distillery, uh, was to, to establish a sort of totally sustainable farming system whereby basically everything goes around in circles and, and we just take out the end products. Um, for instance, the, the dung from the cattle sheds is used to spread on the fields as, as well as the pot ale from the distillery to grow the barley. We grow the barley, the barley is then malted, obviously distilled, and then the draft, the byproducts from the distilling process, are then fed back to the cattle. And so we, we, we eventually we create this sort of totally sustainable system where hopefully we can keep our inputs as low as possible and at the same time, you know, produce a, a fairly unique product. Yes, there's no waste and... Uh, no, everything's used. And people who come to a distillery they, be, they buy the whiskey and they, they can also buy their beef. Yep. And, uh, and and have the whole experience. It's, it's unique. Everything comes from yeah. That's, yeah. that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. But you, you also smoked. Uh, you also smoke uh, venison. Is yeah. it venison that is? Uh, yeah, that's it's another ground? one of our Isla products uh, uh, that we do now. Uh, it, that really was started um, by demand, I suppose, because having having created the the smoked beef the retailers then wanted another addition to the range you know they, they like to have a, a range of products from a particular company so so we developed the smoked venison and we now do a uh, isla peat smoked salmon which is which is you know very good very so it's smoked it. on isla peat yeah but it's not uh, there's no real no, salmon no, on isla. No, no, no 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 we buy the salmon come from from the northwest coast of scotland okay um yeah oh, that's interesting too and uh, and I saw some pastrami. A pastrami is really it's a, we call it pastrami, uh, but it's it, you could call it capaccio. <laughs> it's basically it's a cold smoked beef, very similar recipe to, to smoked salmon. But same, it, it same has sort of some uh, spices and yeah. uh, okay. not not much spice. No, no, very little added to it. Just salt, salt and beef basically, and smoke. I think we were probably. Uh, the first people to send any Scotch beef to, to France on the lifting of the ban. Our, our beef arrived on the day of the lifting of the ban uh, in the French restaurants, so that was quite quite exciting. Yeah, I remember. You know, we, we, we flew uh, it, flew it in from 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 Isla, sort of. And uh, and the chef, the chef was absolutely enthusiastic about yeah. about the beef, yeah. and he and it's a chef who works also with whiskey, and and he had done a, a lovely uh, dish with with fish. He'd cooked some fish and wrapped. The fish in in in, right. in yeah. the Isla beef yeah. and and use some whiskey. I don't remember which whiskey it was, but an Isla whiskey with, with a, a very light uh, creamy sauce. Mm. Uh, and I tasted it; it was gorgeous, really. Mm. And good. and he just loved it. So. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's that's good. Good.
This is Isla beef marinated in single malt whiskey uh, from uh, Rockside Farm. We met Mark French um, the other day. Uh, he said to us that he, use, um, he uses Brookladdy tenure with it, so it's natural that I use it as well in, my, in this recipe. So, and also, I think he's right to use Brookladdy uh, to smoke it is beef because it's a delicate fruity whiskey which brings in a, a very uh, gentle flavor and the, so that it doesn't hide the beef uh, um, save a flavor it's always the same with this cooking with malt whiskey you you really have to adjust your aromas so what i've done keep it simple more i would say more a summary of spring recipe than a wintery one cottage cheese it's always it doesn't taste much, but it will be the good base for it. And a lot of crunchy vegetables, or what you can find in your garden if you're lucky enough to have a garden, or from the shop. Carrot, celery, uh, we can have cucumber, radishes, or anything which crunches under, under your, your, your teeth. So make a mix of that with the, the cottage cheese and uh, uh, have had some olive oil. We found in the shop, we found a wonderful olive oil with lemon, uh, which have been uh, really uh, squeezed with, with uh, the, the olive when they made the oil, so it's, it's so tasty. And your spices, what you like, I just had simply uh, pepper and a bit of salt, and I use our French uh, fleur de sel, because this is the best salt you can find. You mix all that, a little lime juice, some coriander, fresh coriander, chopped coriander, mix like that. And I just need to add a little to these little cornet. I don't know the word in English. So it's you wrap, you, you literally wrap um, the, this mix into, uh, into the, the beef, the little beef slice. Mm, not bad. And on a bed of lettuce, just a few, what you, what you want, a few tomatoes or something to, to add a little touch of color. And, uh, oh gosh, the summer fruit, you get some melon, some... Also in Brooklyn, I always have this floral note, which is a hawthorn for me, sort of little touch of honey. So all this will really gently and nicely uh, mingle together. And um, that's a starter. And uh, uh, also, if you if you really uh, like your whiskey so much, you can have on a with a brush. You just brush your corny with some of the whiskey, and uh, it's as simple as that. Cooking with malt whiskey is not difficult, as you will see. I'm using Brookladic 10 year old and uh, well you can see from the bottle that there's not much left but don't think I've indulged myself in this bottle but it would be more my camera crew they really liked Brookladic but they've left me just enough for the recipe. Good lads and lassie. <laughs> <Nice. laughs>